the culture is actually We're not urinating on fire. You can stop asking that question. I'm going to be calling your defense. What I talked to Russell about is on your business. In this year's owners' meetings, not much has changed in the NFL landscape, but there were a few big decisions made. In an attempt to massage the egos of the refs' union, the motion to make roughing the passer reviewable was rejected. It doesn't matter. We all knew it was going to be like reviewing pass interference a few years ago, where only a play or two was overturned and blatant P.I. wasn't because reasons. You will, however, see more potential ref ball and players with the number zero on the field. There will also be no gradual cuts down to the final roster in the preseason from 90 players, which should keep starters fresh for a probable wave of injuries in week two of the season. Speaking of changes that no one wants, there's a chance that Thursday night football will have flex scheduling. It's more than likely going to be up for vote in May, and would give teams at least 15 days notice of a change from Sunday to Thursday. This would be terrible for the game, but remember the dollar is what drives the NFL. TV rights fees are far more important to the league than the fans, and we all know it. It'll probably be reality barring a miracle. On to the NFC's moves. Tampa Bay can at least say they're doing significantly better than Arizona. Years of organizational fuck-ups have forced them kicking and screaming into an overhaul. A new GM and head coach at the helm. Praying that extending Kyler to that huge sum wasn't a gross mistake. DeAndre Hopkins is on his way out thanks to this. At least we believe. Arizona still thinks they can get at least a second for him. But considering his aging cap hit, Plus, what guys like Amari Cooper and Brendan Cooks got in return? Probably not. We will merely enjoy this smattering of free agent acquisitions while we debate if they trade the third overall pick to a QB-hungry team for a haul of picks. They could get at least two firsts for it. It'll ease the pain of trading New Hopkins for probable peanuts. And Buda Baker demanding a trade out of this shithole. Have fun! Arizona Cardinals select Paris Johnson Jr. Ohio State! You mean to tell me that the Cardinals are actually listening to their franchise QB? Kyler Murray had been begging them to pick a lead offensive lineman in the draft for years. But Steve Kime decided it'd be a better idea to Thanos snap his ACL in half. With people in charge who hopefully aren't fucking idiots, Kyler lobbied hard for Paris Johnson. It took another trade up to do, but they had a successful first round. They not only got arguably the best O-lineman in the draft, they got an extra first round pick from the Texans to play with next season. Yet they somehow lose by being forced to give up a third round pick for tampering with Jonathan Gannon. Philly fans cheered when he left the team and now they get another reason to celebrate. Jesus. Dust off the old Abrams, Arizona! The predictable failure of Kingsbury and Kime has forced their hand. And even then it's led to some embarrassing revelations. New Hopkins was supposed to be traded, but nobody wanted to take on his cap for a first or second rounder. So he was unceremoniously cut with over $22 million worth of dead cap. It might be a better outcome than with former first rounder Isaiah Simmons. Traded to the Giants for a seven. Brutal. It only goes lower. Buda Baker still wants out of here and Kyler might be out for a while this season. But there's no starter under center for week one announced for the sake of competitive advantage. Choosing between Clayton Toon or recently acquired Josh Dobbs. Do you wanna die or do you wanna die? This is the weakest NFC as a whole I've seen in a long time. We've gone from Rodgers, Breeze, Brady, and more to Jalen Hurts and maybe some other things. This is going to lead to some wonky results, I know it. First off, I believe there's a repeat winner in the NFC East. Philly takes it thanks to their offense. Sorry, Dallas. The NFC North, I'm going to kill myself in the future for it, but I'm picking Detroit. I think the Lions do it this year. Think that's crazy? I have Atlanta winning the NFC South. The only other serious contender here is New Orleans, and I don't trust them to stay healthy. NFC West, all things considered, is Seattle's to lose. This could change if Bosa plays and Purdy stays healthy, so I have them in a wildcard spot. The other two slots go to Dallas and Minnesota. As I said though, the final spots are anyone's guess. And that's the majesty of the game itself. Enough talk. Let's get to the football. The sun has come out in DC. The stench of perennial failure is gone. And the fans respond by coming out of their fallout shelters. Washington has sold out their home opener. How fitting of a way to celebrate such an event with an insanely agonizing showing that raises everyone's blood pressure by 30 points. And better yet make it against an alleged contestant in the Caleb sweepstakes starring Josh Dobbs. Painful interceptions, fumbles in the red zone, more fumbles conveniently leading to a defensive touchdown. You got it, kids! 
Never doubt the hunger of a dog that hasn't eaten in a week. And never doubt it from a team fighting for jobs. It gets to the point that Arizona has the lead. A 6.1. God help us all. Fortunately, Washington's playing the Cardinals. Montez Sweat all but saves their ass. Sam Howell does the rest. Did we really need another Baker Mayfield in the NFL? Apparently so. The game plays out like the Dan Snyder era. Incredibly ugly. Do yourself a favor and just run with it. Don't ask questions, just go. Arizona is incredibly dedicated to the tank. I'm proud of them for avoiding the temptation of winning. It was a highly seductive mistress. The Giants were fucking terrible in the first half. Josh Dobbs became Dan Marino against that defense. Their offense couldn't stop fucking up. They had collapsed so hard they hadn't scored a point in six quarters down 20 to nothing. I have a theory as to why the Cardinals folded after this. Michael Bidwell gave them a halftime speech. If you win this game, he cries, I'm not only going to raise the price of Gatorade in the locker room, I'll yell at the coach in front of his kids. The defense will step aside and allow Danny Derps to cook. Saquon will drive this bus right to the end zone for endless points. The Cardinals will be run over on offense by an M1 Abrams. 24 unanswered points by the G-Men to reinforce what Arizona is. Full call of the week. Did you seriously expect it to be anyone else? I'm honestly not even that impressed with New York. This shouldn't have even been a game. You want me to give you the Medal of Honor for this shit? And Saquon's now hurt. Oh, god damn it. Dallas will have to make do against Arizona. A tanking team, but considering what they did against the Giants last week, they're not to be taken lightly. Note that the same scenario that happened against the G-Men is occurring again. The Cardinals shocked their opponent by jumping out to an early lead. Eh, this isn't a big deal. Arizona will choke it again like they did last Sunday. This shouldn't be a problem with a team with more talent like the Cowboys. It's here where we made a crucial mistake. McCarthyism doesn't do well against red scares. The issue lies in the second half, particularly in the red zone. They couldn't get anything going whatsoever. Unforced error after unforced error, forcing a turnover on downs at the opposing goal line. Being stymied at the eight on a drive by repeated stalling to force a field goal. In response, the Cowboy defense without Trayvon makes Josh Dobbs look like Prime Kyler by being picked apart for six. Dallas will get back to the red zone, though. And Dak will prove his medal. Two chances to get it in here. Prescott looking in zone. That one's picked off. It's Kaiser White. A vintage interception in the red zone to end their hopes and dreams. Christmas came early for all of us. The Cardinals are America's team for one day. The Cowboys and Notre Dame losing on the same weekend? Please, I can only get so erect. Arizona, you play hard, I'll give you that. I can't shit on a team that's greatly overachieving for what they're supposed to be, despite lacking talent. However, that ends today. You're playing San Francisco. It's going to be a painful match against a juggernaut. It wasn't even anything you did or didn't do. You're just going up against the Niners. They pull these kind of tricks on everyone. I know you can't stop Christian McCaffrey, but no one really can this year. Sadly, you don't get brownie points for simply trying. Only another L on the stat sheet as the Niners continue their world tour of pure firepower. The Niners are 4-0 and, and show no signs of stopping anytime soon. Cards look on the bright side. At least you only have to play them one more time this year. If I had to give a participation trophy to a team that busts their ass to lose by two scores, Arizona would be the team that gets it. Oh, how they heroically overachieved to scare their opponents. Never look past them, because they'll keep it tight. For about two quarters. Since he didn't turn the ball over because they refused to take the points, they simply wanted their defense to generate point production of their own with a pick six. Seamless game plan. In this match, the Bengals felt more like the Bengals. The offense was finally clicking after four weeks of nothing and the defense was holding their own. Jamar Chase ate like a god in the receiving column. Chemistry with Burrow once again. The asterisk here is that it is the Cardinals, but as I said, they play hard. They're like Rudy without the feel-good aspect and happy ending. All they have are rumors that they'll move on from Buda Baker and Kyler soon. No complaints from Cincy, though. They'll take anything given to them. This is an Arizona Cardinals game, so we know the drill. Play hard, keep it competitive for a little over a half, and then get overwhelmed by the sheer lack of talent on their roster. They're probably the best bad team in the NFL right now. What does that get them? Pretty much nothing besides another L in the stat sheet. If only analytics was able to calculate how many percentage points grit and tenacity had to win probability. Perhaps one of these days they'll be able to stop Kyron Williams from gashing them to bits on strong side runs. 
Perhaps they'll have answers for the Rams' elite defensive line. Perhaps they'll regain the talent they had about a decade ago and become contenders again. Okay, that one's a bit of a stretch. It's still another week where we don't know what the Rams are. They show flashes of their old glory, but can they unleash it consistently? It's hard to tell against the likes of Arizona. Arizona's been playing the same game for pretty much the entire year. Is there any real point in going over them? We already know what they're going to be. The little engine that tries but blows up as it climbs the hill. Seattle is that hill. Maybe they're the engine. It's a repeated issue of the Seahawks where the offense just sputters and sputters and continues to sputter. Feast or famine with this team. Mostly in the red zone, where they once again find new and exciting ways to struggle. Forgive me if I'm not ultra impressed with the Seahawks winning. Oh, the defense did well? It's the fucking Cardinals. They're nothing good. You should have won by at least 20, yet you keep treating games like Kevin with a chili. And until Seattle fixes it, the frustrations will continue. You're better than this, guys. Get your shit together. There isn't much available on the market to replace Cousins. Certainly nothing near his calibers of late. I'd tell them to scramble, but there isn't much available to even do that. Break the glass in case of emergency? Well, this is certainly one. Josh Dobbs is backup caliber, but he's on the outs in Arizona and has proven he can start in a pinch. It's better than what they have, so congratulations, you're a Viking. Josh, you're gonna be thrown into the fire, but hey, it's a starting gig. Good chance to add a little more money to that next contract if you succeed. Hopefully. Baltimore continually frustrates me with their inconsistency on the offensive side of the ball. They have the potential to dominate their opponents like they did last week. But with each new slate, it's as if the Ravens run a hard reset on their servers. For whatever reason, Baltimore just did nothing for most of the game. Lamar couldn't get anything going. The receivers couldn't separate from a weak secondary. Their attack had to be dragged out of mud by a Gus bus. I don't understand how they can just look completely lost for entire games. You better be treating that defense to a high-end steak dinner for the bailout job they put on today because they were the main reason the Ravens won anything. It is their third straight win, and I'm probably being too harsh on them considering the travel they've had to do, but once again, it's out of concern. I know what they can be, and if they can be consistent, great things could come. Arizona too, but they're just waiting for Kyler to come back. The Cardinal rule only overcomes Dallas. The quarterback shuffle continues throughout the NFL. In Cleveland, Deshaun Watson's shoulder's been massaged enough to be ready to play. For Arizona, Dobby the House Elf got moved to a different location and Kyler's not ready yet. We must suffer through Clayton Toon's debut. Like his namesake, he played like he was a second-tier antagonist in Math Rabbit. Against one of the best defenses in football? Nope. Syntax error, team not found. 58 yards of offense is generous enough if we're being honest. The score may have been ugly, but the game was even uglier than that. Cleveland had more penalty yards than the Cardinals had offense. Now this is the kind of tanking that gets a team another quarterback to ruin in the offseason. Browns, you can find the win in the pool of your opponent's blood. Deshaun looks relatively passable as well, so there's that. And again, it is Arizona. Most teams consider the Cardinals to be a bye week, but you can't do that in this NFL. There's another big reason this time around. Kyler Murray is fully healed from his ACL tear. He's going to be given the nod and a chance to save his job. His first test will be a Falcon squad that can't stop getting in their own damn way. Here it's shocking. Atlanta's moving the ball down the field with purpose. Scoring two touchdowns in time-eating order, we see the most shocking revelation. Giving the ball to Bijan near the goal line. Incredible. Unbelievable. Common sense. That's all we'll be seeing of that. Anything resembling offense for the Falcons will come to a stop. Arizona gets a touchdown, but Atlanta can't escape their wrath. Even as Kyler throws a welcome back to the NFL pick to give them a surefire TD, the Falcons love themselves doing fuck all with it. You know how this gets worse? Greg Dortch. Big punt return thanks to shitty coverage to allow Arizona to show them how it's done. See Atlanta? You can score touchdowns in the red zone. Amazing how that fucking works, eh? It sadly gets worse too. Taylor Heineke's been bitten by his 10,000 dogs. The horror of Desmond Ritter has to come back in. Somehow things are not completely fucked, which is a strange turn of events considering these two. But of course he trips on a fourth down. Of course he does. God damn it, Arthur, I'm blaming you for this. The fortunate thing is that the cards go three and out, and Atlanta proceeds not to die. Mostly because the refs were desperate to keep Arizona tanking with a ticky-tacky pass interference call. This touchdown by Desmond Ritter is not ticky-tacky. 
The Falcons have the lead again. If only the defense was as stout as it had been earlier in the year, it'd be fine. Did you forget that Kyler Murray was good? A lot of people did, to be fair, but he's near single-handedly carried the franchise to a win here today. Well done, Kyler. You're ruining the tank. From 50-plus, a chip shot to win it. The snap, and the kick is good. And the Arizona Cardinals have won it here in Week 10. The next time America's Most Wanted comes on, I better see Arthur Smith's smug shot. His mismanagement of this franchise is criminal. He is an enemy of freedom. And his reign of terror must end in order for peace to be restored. A tyrant's persecuting anything resembling football. If there's any sanity, he'll be cast back to FedEx where he belongs. Pathetic. A battle of two hot tanks turns into an exciting matchup. Where Dazzle and Flair are showcased at the quarterback position. Kyler Murray versus CJ Stroud in a fight to the death. That alone makes it a must-watch game. And it honestly felt strange. None the ways that C.J. Stroud flashed his incredible promise in the first half of play. Not in Arizona doing their best to keep up with the Texans, but in how sluggish things felt after the first half. It may be 21 to 10 Houston. C.J. might be making magic happen with Tank Dell before halftime, but Houston's unable to adjust to the Cardinals afterwards. Their offense just dies on arrival, and in inexplicable ways as well. Kyler's ability is showcased as well with a touchdown to put it to a five-point game and it turns into a battle of defense. Whether that's due to the Texans buckling down with quality play calling or the Cardinals getting greedy and choosing not to take the points is to be determined. Even on muffed punts, Arizona looks rough, but then CJ lets it rip right into the hands of a defender on two consecutive drives. He must be making up for lost time or something. You figure the cards would take this one, right? That be no. Houston's defense holds firm. And despite an abnormal performance from Stroud, this game proved that the Texans defending 11 can take a game on their own. Yes, it is Arizona, I get it, but progress is progress. Houston's in playoff contention now. That is not a joke. Tell yourself that three months ago. The Rams liked the taste of humiliating a division rival last week. They chose to catch that same high this time around. Arizona isn't anywhere near the catch that Seattle was, but you know what they say. When you're addicted to something, you'll stoop to deep lows to get any sort of fix. LA will simply crush this pathetic worm beneath their feet. Matthew Stafford will return to the legend of old, effortlessly slinging four touchdowns on the day against a Cardinal eager to die. Kyron Williams is back and he's burning everything he touches today. 228 yards of rushing for the team as a whole. It's what the Rams have missed the most, complete victory. There's nothing like the high of domination, even if it is Arizona. Now the NFC shaping up, there's still a fighting chance for a playoff spot. I honestly shouldn't have been surprised by this. There's at least one game a year where the Steelers play like complete shit against a bottom feeder. Playing down to competition, looking past their opponent, the Tomlin or Coward tradition, whatever you want to call it. The hopes of last week are gone. Arizona, for as limited in talent as they are, play hard and fight for every inch they can. They'll pounce on teams that take them lightly. Say hi to Dallas for us, Pittsburgh. A golden opportunity for an easy win, and they piss on its remains like always. And the expected progression for Kenny Pickett was for naught. Fell apart with an ankle injury that forces Pittsburgh to kiss Teddy. The response was apparently going out of shotgun on fourth down at the goal line? Did Matt Canada even leave? I'd answer it, but the Steelers can't stop a third downer, Trey McBride. Pittsburgh's out of inside linebackers. He'll be starting Blake Martinez and Miles Jack by week 15. When the only highlights for them are weather delays, it was an epic embarrassment. People call this a stunning upset. It's a perennial low cow of the week show. A damning indictment of coaching, but no real questions will be asked and the same shit will keep happening. This is what I get for huffing a shitload of hopium. We've only got five weeks left in the season from hell itself. That means the playoffs are about to be seen as we crest over the hill. Then the race to the finish will truly begin. The NFC is much more slanted towards the top. Philly still remains the number one seed despite their loss, but San Francisco and Detroit are gaining on them fast. As the clown in the Army Battalion, Atlanta is fourth in tank division. Dallas should be in a top four spot, but they're stuck in a division with the Eagles. The other two wildcard spots are a four-team race. The Vikings and Packers claim positions for now, but the Rams and Seahawks are right on their tail. Right behind them, the Buccaneers and Saints are knocking on the door of tank division. And the Bears and Giants are currently in a combination of long-term planning and extremely slim chances to make noise. 
This is the playoff situation, and the madness is only going to amplify. There's only one rule, and sadly, the Panthers didn't follow it. Don't get Well, this is gonna take a bit to sort out. Scriptwriters are generating so much hope that it could power a small town for years on end. A mediocrity carousel that'll make your head spin. The age of upsets brings us endless mosh pits. The NFC is even worse off. But we have a new number one seat in San Francisco because Dallas has usurped the Eagles in the division lead for now. They're in second place. Detroit, despite their struggles as a blade, have third seed, which won't be in danger. That's because Tampa Bay is somehow leading tank division. The abomination we hoped would die. They'll have the right to host Philly in a wildcard game if things stand. With second wildcard, I don't know how, but the Vikings are in sole possession of it. A million explosions and somehow alive. Same as Green Bay in the wildcard spot that should not exist. A five-way tie exists for the right to get slaughtered. The Rams, Seahawks, Falcons, and Saints are also in the mix for better or worse. And in the background, the Giants and Bears are kicking back laughing at how the hell they're only a game back of a dance ticket. Welcome to the mess, kids. We've got four games left. Only one spot's been clinched and two teams are out. Buckle up. Keep your hands inside at all times. And one more thing. This one isn't much of a shocker. Arizona has mostly been Arizona and will fall victim to teams that have their shit together. Guess who they played this week? Only the juggernaut of the conference. This was allegedly a Cardinals home game. All I'm seeing are Niners fans, and for good reason. The contest wasn't much of one. San Francisco did the usual San Francisco things. Do I really have to go over them all? It's a broken record. Purdy was efficient as hell. Christian McCaffrey had yet another premium day, making Carolina continue to eat shit, and the Cardinals offense did little but shoot blanks. Remember when we thought the Niners were in some kind of trouble? That feels like ancient history at this point. Our concerns overturned with a six-game win streak and a guaranteed home playoff game by winning the NFC West. The number one seed is in sight now. But for Arizona, well, at least you tried. At this point, we know what the Cardinals are. A team that's just counting down the hours until they're free for winter break. Not like me when I was in school, to be honest. They sit for the last few days watching movies and dreaming about playing Xbox. It's fine, just let Justin Fields get some highlight tape for the offseason. Maybe delude the Bears into thinking he's still their savior or something. Kyler, he's kinda there, I guess. Both teams are merely auditioning players for next year, and Arizona's got a long way to go. Attempting to come back in the end, but too late to return from the abyss. <laughs> this is the paper soft schedule that still has Chicago somehow on life support for playoffs. It's a win, but it doesn't really ruin their tank. Carolina's pick is still intact, despite Joe Barry's attempts at sabotage. The greatest prize indeed. The Eagles are a shit show and a half merely skating by on town, but even they can't fuck this up, right? It's at home against fucking Arizona and the defensive coordinator that all but cost them a Super Bowl last year. Come on, the schedule headed into the stretch is Charmin soft. They're a spitting clone of the 2020 Steelers, but even they hosted a home playoff game. Philly can manage. Look, Julio Jones is making the five players that were forced to start him in their fantasy championships rich. Arizona's getting chunks of yardage, but Kyler keeps frustrating us all with one of the worst miscommunications in football and delivers one of the finest pick sixes the league has seen this year. Delicious stuff. It's 21 to 6 Philly at halftime, and this should be all but over. There's a big problem. It's the Eagles' defense. It's fucking terrible. Aging parts galore, a bunch of losses in free agency, and a linebacking core in secondary that are destroyed lead to disaster. People forgot that Kyler Murray's actually pretty good and can steal games. He and James Conner are eating. They're taking this garbage Matt Patricia defense and dicing it apart. They literally cannot be stopped. This is the upside that Arizona was looking for when Kyler was drafted. A true running gun offense. And all it took was a free falling shit show. The game's tied before you know it. And Philly's in a shootout. Well, they're in a shootout against the fucking Cardinals is anyone's guess. The Link wants heads to roll for this, regardless of outcome. Every touchdown scored is immediately countered because the Eagles defense is... 
What are they, anyway? Hoping Jalen Carter wreaks havoc? Praying Shaq Leonard's back magically heals up? They aren't just blowing it. They're getting fucking gashed in every conceivable metric. Arizona's desperately trying to give you the game with an onside kick. What does Philly do on offense? Showcase regression with the most predictable shit imaginable. Nick Sirianni's about to be a dead man walking after this field goal. Is there anything else to say? The Eagles have shown no ability to stop Kyler in the cards. Why now? They seriously thought Matt Patricia was going to fix anything. Dad. Dear Lord, what a shitty football team. Connor again. Nose down. He's in for the Cardinals touchdown. You didn't just lose to the Cardinals. You lost to the goddamn coordinator you couldn't wait to see leave. What fucking delicious irony. It'd be awfully nice if the Seahawks could ever not be the Steelers of the NFC. Continually mediocre, dancing through endless bullshit in spite of themselves and not bad enough to force significant change in the organization. The flaws of Seattle have been pushed down your throat over and over, so no point in doing that. Simply letting them fail to take advantage of a Cardinals team picking up the pieces should do the trick. Against any other team, the Seahawks die swiftly, especially with how awful this defense is. Elite guard unit? Sure, maybe the Iraqis. They also gave up shit tons of land without a fight. With it being a seven point deficit, late and embarrassing defeat is in sight. It's fortunate for them that this is Arizona and their defense is weak. Best for the Seahawks to learn absolutely nothing and get bailed out by talents like they usually do. Geno Smith setting the single season record for most go ahead TDs late is more than enough proof of that. They even went for two to take the lead but they may have left too much time on the board. Kyler's leading Arizona on a bit of a drive, taking them to the fringes of field goal range. Even if it's a long shot, the cards have the chance to do something truly hilarious. Good snap. The hold is good. The kick is wide to the right. It's no good. Of course, we can't trust Arizona to do anything of note. Seattle, like usual, escapes with a chance at life. No one's surprised at the Cardinals being bad this season. They're trying to clean up after the god-awful Kyman Kingsbury era and like anything resembling talent and skill throughout the lineup. The only things people were waiting for were Bruda Baker to be traded and Kyler Murray's return. Both were rather underwhelming. Even then, this team did play hard. They may have lost a lot of games, but by God, they hacked a limb or two off you in the process. It was inspiring to see, and it may lead to hope in the future. Then again, I've been wrong before, so their offseason will have to be solid for a better understanding of it. Kyler Murray's done enough to keep his job as the starting quarterback of the team. Spoiler is that they're stuck due to the massive contract they gave him, but he's shown the ability to steal games on multiple occasions. Once again, you can't gauge much from this year besides letting players audition for a greater role. It'll probably mean Buda Baker's gone in the offseason, but them's how the breaks go. Some progress was made, but there's a lot of work to be done. Good luck, Cardinals. Plead with those above so Michael Bidwell doesn't fuck it up.